evening. Oh, I can take that down. I don't need that up. Don't need that trigger warming up. Right. Today, I ha I've had this information for a while. I have just never got around to going through it. I actually got it off a Facebook page. And there's three pieces of information from different people. And they're doing some really good work putting it together. Because I can sit down and think, okay, put this in order. Like the facts, put all the facts in order. But they've done that. And um, there's another piece which is quite long. So we'll go through, I'll put that one on last. Because that is quite long and I won't watch, read it all. And I'm not reading it, I'm going to get my auto reader to read it. So, um, I had pinged Seth Rogers Cash App to the top of the chat. So, if you're watching on replay, please. If you want to help, help, help Seth that way. Um, what else was there? There's nothing really come out this weekend, apart from all the searches. That led to nothing. Led to nothing. So, well, I'm going to get me coffee. But thank you for being here with me tonight. But like I said, I've always wanted to stick to the facts of the case, which this woman put together is quite a long list. Right, so we're going to look at that. And um, see what they've got to say. But I've also got that police recording, and it's being enhanced. It's, it is a uh, it's, it's audio transcribed, so it's a lot clearer than the original. Right, because I find it very hard to listen to them because I don't know all the jargon when they use all these code words and whatever. I'm thinking, what are they talking about? But that said, that people like us can't listen to them. <laughs> anyway, so it's 42 days now that Sebastian has been missing. And today I went on to my Twitter account and sent, put on one of the um, Taylor Swift's, right? got her page pulled up and I put on one of their posts about Sebastian, put his picture up there and his description, everything. Whether I see it, I don't know. But I'll do it every other day. So I won't do it tomorrow. I'll do it Wednesday. I'll do it again Wednesday. If they've got a new post up, I'll put it on that post. Right? Because apparently Sebastian was a big, was a light Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift actually went to high school in Hendersonville. But it's not just her, there's, someone mentioned, uh, because I put a comment upon this Facebook page about doing it, right? 
uh, someone mentioned all those places in Nashville, all those country singers go on their pages and post it on there. But I don't know them. So if anyone knows any country singers and you know their ex account, go on there and post. Hold on, I'll show you the picture to get post. It's not very clear on here. Oh, but there is this one. But the writing, I can't read that writing on there. But you could always put in the detail, write the details in yourself as well, as well as post that picture. Because at least then they know, like I did, they know it is a, it is a missing child. But I don't use that one because it's got endangered and I like this one because it's got the amber alert. Right. There is a new one which is on the TBI page which you can get printed off. So if there's any singers you know on if you're on X and you follow the music crowd the, the celebrities post it on their pages because if they don't see it you i can assure you their uh, followers will see it so as long as his name and pictures being put out there constantly this is not going to become a cold case and when i say constantly i don't mean once a month once a week, every week, put his picture and name out there. Uh, if you can print it off and print some flyers off, then I think it's on the TBI page, right? And you can print it off. And print it off. And a good place to take them, I would say, would be take out, right? Ask them if they would be willing to put um, a flyer with every takeout order they have. Right? And restaurants. Ask them if they can put them inside the uh, menus. Put them on the tables anywhere. Or just on their door as people are coming in and going out. Because I think the post, the flyers that are put in, being put up on like poles and lamp posts or things like that are being took down. Someone is going about and taking them down. But they can't take them down if they're in a restaurant. Right? Because they'll get seen doing it. So please, if you can help, print this off, pull it around your... Because I know it's from Tennessee, right, Hendersonville. But like I say, it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. And another thing I come across today, now this is interesting. And I will show you this, hold on. Right. I was about to eat and I was gobsmacked by this. Um, what was it? <laughs> That's it. Now I'm going to share this with you because this just poof, blew my mind when I saw this. Right? And it's, all of these are targeting institutions for children with autism in the USA. Right? Because I'm thinking. 
could they put him into one of these places, right? And if they have, they've done it illegally because they haven't got the biofathers agreement. Right, but I'm just gonna see if I can pull this up a bit bigger. Right? Now look at this, look where they all are. Tennessee. Autism, Tennessee. Illinois Centre for Autism. Sherwood Autism Centre. Mississippi Centre for Autism. And where are they at the moment? They're down in Mississippi. You come over here, Marcus Autism Centre. Um, Autism Institute of South Carolina. Jericho School for Children with Autism. Now that's a school. That is an, an like, it's, they don't stay there. They do come home. But look at them all around here. Pia Centre for Autism. You've got Protection Child Development Institute. I don't know what that one looked there. Uh, then you've got this one. Anderson Centre for Autism. Right? Now we're around about, if that's Memphis, Mississippi. I mean, Mississippi, no, there was. He, he, oh, yeah, I thought he was working in Memphis. So why is he in Mississippi? Why are they in Mississippi? Perhaps I've read wrong, right? Perhaps I've read it wrong, and he is in Memphis. They are in Memphis, right? But they are placed around here. You've got Memphis, the Clarksville, that's where the biofather lives. Right? And they live around here somewhere. Right? See if I can get into a cool still. Uh-huh. Oh, look, you've got a Glasgow. <laughs> you've got a Glasgow up here in Scotland. It's nicer than our one. But see all the plants, see what I mean? How, how many there are is in the area? In that, I say small area, but it isn't. It's a big area. But they could have took him to any of these. Right, after school, that's an institute, I think at South Carolina, that's the uh, Emerge School, that's the third after school for autism, right? And I thought, oh, would I be able to email them with the details? But then I thought, no, no, back off. Because I know the father, Seth Rogers, has got his PIs onto this. Well, he's got his PIs onto me. So I thought, no, I'm not doing nothing. I might be to someone like Trev, time, from Trev time. But I know the father's got his PIs. And I could easily send him a message with the um, flyer. And in the message, make it clearer about Sebastian Rogers, his height and everything, and how his father, his bio father, is looking for him. Yeah? Because I think it all has to be checked out. But I know his father, his father did say he was getting it checked out himself by his PI. Because, and then that's not what I was saying about 
with the court that uh, Chris is under for his uh, ch child, for his daughter, child custody case. He's had all that sealed, so it can't be released to the public. Right? Not even the judge or the DCFS workers or whoever can say anything, can repeat anything that is said in that court. So they could have put him into one of these institutions and said, look, we're okay because Sebastian is now, because of his, his, his regressed, we've had to put him into an, institu an institution which can help him. Right? So he's no longer living in the house, which will look okay. So there's no concerns there then with your daughter being there with, your, with Sebastian. But there was no concerns in the first place. It's just all in Chris's simple little head. And so I just think like that because <coughs> there's no sign of him. Nothing. Now, I was listening to a YouTuber today. Oh, was it JLR? Can't remember. And they were saying, he was saying, talk, they were talking about these women that are going out searching on their own. And they come across some items. One was like um, sort of socky wear where you go bowling. They said it was white and red stripe sort of thing. Well, well I, we don't do that here in the UK. We go bowling and we keep our own socks on. You know what I mean? We use their shoes, but we, we can keep our own socks on. But it's different in America. And they said they also found a little torch. Right? And the torch was the size of the palm of your hand. And there's something else as well. So they found the police. And the police come out. Said they didn't take the sock. Even though they phoned the bowling alley up. Right? To ask them themselves if they're missing any. And. Um, but they didn't take the sock. She said she do, she's not sure if they took the torch or any of the other items. Well, I'm sorry, but every item I found should have been bagged up and took back. Sorry. Should have been bagged up, tagged, and took back. Now, in my eyes, Right, you listen to the police interview, right? And I'll pull that up actually. Um, I'll go for the back there. Um, press interview, please, please. It'll be briefing or. Let's put in
No. No, I, I want to do this and listen to the words. Listen to the words because it's what they're not saying. Hang on. Let's give it one second. Okay. Because to me, this is concerning. I'm concerned about this. Since late February. The investigation remains ongoing with steadfast support from the Summit County Sheriff's Office, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, and many other local and federal resources. We are exploring every lead that comes in and every tip that comes in. Um, as I said before, the investigation remains ongoing. The entire community is deeply saddened by what has what has occurred. We're all extremely concerned for Sebastian's welfare. I want to encourage the community to stay vigilant to report anything that they think may be of some significance to the investigation, no matter how minute it may appear to be to you. Please call one eight hundred TBI Find with any tips, or the Sumner County Emergency Communications Center at six one five four. 451-3838. We understand the anxiety and the concern that this case has caused in the community. We too share the anxiety and concern for Sebastian. I want to reiterate that we are doing everything we can to find Sebastian and bring him home. Despite the passage of time, the commitment to finding Sebastian remains unwavering. I said this when we scaled the search back. Our commitment to finding Sebastian remains. We will continue to investigate every possible lead that comes in. The Summer County Sheriff's Office wants to express our gratitude to the community and the many individuals who have helped in the search, the many individuals who have called in tips, the many individuals who have printed flyers and kept Sebastian's face in the news. Nothing would be, uh, nothing would make me happier than to wake up tomorrow morning with a tip that cracks this case wide open and we find Sebastian and bring him home. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Susan Allen from the TBI. Thank you, WG. Hold on, hold on. Good morning, we'll see Thanks you guys Um We wanted to... Well, I'm just going to get back to that last bit. That's a bit that bothered ...the news. Nothing would be... Uh, nothing would make me happier than to wake up tomorrow morning with a tip that cracks this case wide open and we find Sebastian and bring him home. See, nothing would make me happier to wake up tomorrow morning and find we have a tip that cracks this case wide open and we bring Sebastian home or something like that. So are you saying you've got nothing? Are you telling us you've got nothing? You're just waiting on that one tip. That's not encouraging. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Susan Allen from the TBI. Hi, good morning. Thanks for being here. Um, we wanted to, we know how invested everybody is in the search for Sebastian, in finding out what happened to him and bringing him home. Obviously more invested than you lot are. Um, and we want to let everybody know he has not been forgotten. Nobody's forgotten about him. Nobody has given up looking for him. Uh, at the beginning of this investigation, there was a large uh, land search for him. Um, it was very visible. There were also waterways, lakes, ponds that were searched. Um, there were aerial searches with helicopters and drones and fixed wing planes. They were done at night. They were done on weekends. They were done during the day. Um, that was very visible, and it was something everybody was able to see. But we want to let you know that even though there is not that high visibility in investigating this case, that we are not done. This is, it's gone back to what could be considered good old fashioned police work. I'm sorry, but I, I'm from the UK, and I said this last night. I don't have much confidence in the TBI. Because when you talk about Summer Moon, Utah Wells, 
Well, they said it was a complex case. Yes, they've said Sebastian Rogers is a complex case. I just find when they've got cases that are very complex, they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to work it. Um, interviewing individuals, re-interviewing individuals, checking out <coughs> leads, rechecking leads. Um, we have been working with other law enforcement agencies who have had, in other jurisdictions, who have perhaps had some complex cases of their own that they have worked on to uh, get tips from them. We have um, had, you know, this day of, of technology with everyone, ha everyone having cell phones and doorbells and ring bells and surveillance cameras. Um, that, as you can imagine, has been a bit of a chore to be able to collect all those and then review them. It's, it's important so we know what's out there. Um, we have been reviewing that, re reviewing it again. Um, we have had other agencies involved. The FBI has been helpful in that. Um, Secret Service has also been helpful in that. Um, so we are just trying to do whatever we can to keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. Um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Right. They have been, what was it she said? Hold on, let's go back. Whatever we can to keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents, have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. They have been cooperative throughout the beginning of the investigation. But now uh, that tells me at the beginning they helped. They told you everything you needed. <coughs> but I'm not now. Um, they have pretty much done whatever. Pretty much done whatever that we've asked them. Huh? Well, we know for a fact he didn't take a lie detector. You asked him and he said no. The mother said yes. And apparently she's telling everyone she passed. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Because they don't tell you, the KBI or law enforcement don't actually tell you if you passed or not. The only reason why you'll know get a, a pass, be told you've passed, is if you take a private one out. Right? Which is done by the same people that the law enforcement use. Right? But they are obliged then to tell you whether you've passed or not, because you're paying for it. But because the police are paying for it, they're not obliged to tell you anything. Our law enforcement has asked of them. Um, at, at this point, we don't have any evidence. There is not any kind of an indication that there is a criminal element involved. Um, but we are keeping options open. We don't know what has happened. We don't know where Sebastian is right now. Right. So you don't know what has happened and where sebastian is so what you're saying is you've got nothing you've got nothing right now i can tell you now unless a spaceship hovered over his bed over their house and zapped him up or he he managed to fly right no way did he leave that house you said yourself there was no trace of him around that house right now surely there'd be trace of him somewhere because he went to school on the friday and he had to go and get the bus right so where does he get the bus from does he go from outside his house or does he walk to the end of the road to to get it Right, so there'd be some trace of it if that was the case, unless it is rained.
because then it can wash any traces away. Or it's been contaminated by the amount of people walking over a certain area. Some people are saying, because there's no trace of him at all, not even walking to the bus stop to get the bus or anything, then was he even in that house that, that week? Was he somewhere else? But that's easy to find out because the bus driver would know if he got on the bus or not. You know what I mean? Or if the mother, or if the mother took him to school, but that's easy enough for the law enforcement to find out. But I just don't think they've got any. So we are pursuing any and all avenues. Um, we do want to caution some. Uh, there are some media, social media elements out there who purport to have information that is direct from the investigation. Um, I just want to reiterate that that is not the case. Um, the Some of the information that is being... I believe that. Because if the police aren't going to give out law enforcement and TBI aren't giving anything out to the parents, then they're not going to be giving out to news, news agencies, news reels, provided on some of the social media channels is inaccurate, incomplete. Um, we don't want this to damage the investigation. So we would just caution anyone who is following the case to just use some caution. But going back to that video that I'm on about, Seth has now said he's seen the full, full up, 15 minutes of it, and it is a dumpster truck, right? Um, why are the police, law enforcement, so funny about not releasing it then? If it's a jump, jumpster truck, just release the video. Why don't they release the video of Sebastian walking out the uh, Texas, whatever, barbecue place with his mother on the Sunday night? How's that going to harm the investigation? It's just him walking out the restaurant with his mother to the car. As his father said, he's seen that. So how's that hurting the investigation? Why won't they release these videos? Caution as to what you see and what you believe. Um, it, it's caused a bit of a distraction because a lot of what has been out there in some of the social media channels has been rumors and speculations and theories and some of that has been advanced and people have caught a hold of it as if it's what's really happening. Um, that has resulted in us getting information that is either, you know, like I said, distracting. It's uh, taking away time and effort from what the agencies, agencies need to be doing as far as looking for Sebastian. Um, we have had so far, uh, as of this morning, 314 tips that have come in through the tip line. It's been mentioned, but I'll say it again. It's 1-800-TBI-FIND. We are also... 314 tips. That isn't a lot. Well, that isn't a lot. And did you act on that tip that came in about the um, petrol station? Because as far as we know, unless the unless they have been to the that petrol station and they told the staff, don't say if anyone asks, you say nothing, right? So unless they've been told to say nothing, taking tips through email, which is tips. Uh, I'm sorry, tips to TBI, T O TBI, at tbi.tn.gov. Um, what's next? We want people, as Chief Deputy said, to continue to remain vigilant, get uh, vi vigilant, um, get Sebastian's picture out there, continue to share his picture, his information. Um, now that it's getting to be nicer, well, not, not today with the weather, but now that the weather has turned warmer, people, it may be more. Um, 
inclined to be in their yards. If you go out and see anything that looks different, let us know. Something where perhaps a teenager could have hidden. Um, if you have a, a large amount of property in the area or something that has any kind of holes or unstable footing or ledges where, again, where a teen could have gone to hide or to play, um, and you don't feel comfortable checking it out, let us know. We'll get somebody from law enforcement to go out there with you or to uh, check it out themselves. Um, we just want to make sure that every stone is un unturned, that, that there's no stone left unturned, that we want people to make sure that we are looking everywhere we can. We do want to continue to get the tips, but please make it, don't, don't provide information that you might have seen through social media channels. Um, if you have information about Sebastian, about conversations you might have had with him, things he likes to do, places he likes to go, any people he may have mentioned that are in his life, um, that could be helpful in finding out maybe what he was interested in. Finally, uh, we want to thank the community. We want to thank the media. You guys have been really good about keeping his name in the public's eye. Um, that's really important. What about social get workers? Come on. Because we'll be still doing this even once the news agencies, the news reporters stop reporting on it daily. We'll be reporting on it daily. I will be reporting on this daily. And I know there's others that will report this daily. They are not going to let this drop. Um, and thank you for your <coughs> in providing that information out there. And as Chief Deputy said, we also want to thank the community. Um, from the very first day, everybody has really been all in as far as whatever they can do to help in the search, to help pass information on, um, providing water for the, the teams that were out conducting the ground searches. So thank you again to everybody. Um, I'm going to pass it back to Eric Credit. The weather is rolling in. We've got time for some questions. So, yes, ma'am. I was a few minutes behind, so sorry if I missed it, but has there been any indication at this point of foul play or anything of that nature? There is no evidence to support foul play. Have you done a forensic check of the house? Or are you taking their word that he just walked out that house? Either though, your dogs never picked his scent up. Hmm. Is involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. At this point, you don't rule it out. We're not ruling anything out. So five weeks, and you guys covered so much ground. Um, searching, going back, researching. Um, that sounds like Nick Barry. Checked out every case of a possible sighting. Nothing confirmed. Not a trace of Sebastian anywhere. Nothing found. No footprints. No video. Nothing. Nothing that is uh, taking us to locate Sebastian. And are there any working theories? We come up with theories almost daily and try and investigate and make sure that we're doing everything we can to find Sebastian. Share any of those? Well, I hope you've been checking all these um, institutions. No, sir. Two questions if I may. Have you ruled out Sebastian's mom and stepdad's involvement in this case? And as a follow up, have you cleared their alibi? I think the TBI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement since day one of this investigation. There is no evidence to support foul play on the part of Sebastian's parents. No, she said that was cooperative in the beginning. In the beginning. No, sir. You mentioned um, in your last about recent evidence, uh, we heard from the rumors that Jones State has some validity that there were glasses found within the past few days. Can you confirm that? There were some glasses found in the past few days. Or have you been able to identify that they were Sebastian? We are still investigating. And on the tape of Mayday, um, have you found their, how was that coordination happening? Have you found their work helpful in them working in unison or another team? The Cajun Navy is operating independently. They have not reached out to us. Has 
have you gone there investigated if they were fair or helpful or has it been one of the uh, things that has been helpful? One of the things that I really appreciate they've done is print flyers and keep Sebastian's face out there. Uh, it's my hope that one day somebody sees something and calls in and this case breaks wide open and we find Sebastian. They claim they've received threats. Your knowledge of basically filed any police reports or reports to the sheriff's department documenting any of these alleged threats? No, sir. Are you able to explain anything about what those threats are? They would have to call the police and report them. Where did the person go from here? Is it a crime case and they're saying there's signs and we believe he's still alive? And what are you guys going to do to work this time? My hope and prayer is that Sebastian is still alive, yes. Uh, we're going to continue to work on this investigation to follow up every tip and lead that comes in. Uh, some of this may revert back to us going over some things that we've already done for the sixth, seventh, or eighth time. Uh, a fresh and until that tip comes in, you're going to sit on your backside. Very uh, good. I've never heard anything. We're, we're going to continue to work to find Sebastian. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. There is no evidence to support foul play. Are there any active occurrences that you have to report? We have tips called in daily. And is a tip cumulative enough to expand law enforcement resources? Regardless of their legi legitimacy, we're going to follow up on it. Will there be any other agencies pulled in to help you with your search efforts for this case? I'm, I'm certain there will be. You met with the uh, biological father and mother this past week. Um, is that at their request, your request? Um, is that just the interviewing them again? That was at the request of law enforcement. Uh, we, it's not uncommon to talk to the family in investigations like this. I've got time for one more question. Just overall, how has this investigation impacted the morale of your department, especially with all the changes that are going on? Let me put it to you like this. If my kid was missing, this is the team I'd want on it. Uh, the men and women of the Summer County Sheriff's Office, of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, the FBI partners, the other local agencies, the Secret Service, everyone who's had a hand in this case is doing everything they can to find Sebastian. Morale's high. We are here and we are dedicated. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for keeping. All right. So really what I got out of that was they're so waiting for that one tip to come in to open that case up and, and then to bring Sebastian home. So really they've got nothing. They've got nothing. And the, the parent, the mother and stepfather was helping at the beginning, was cooperative at the beginning. How can they be cooperative or even helping now? They came in flipping where Mississippi or wherever. I don't think it's Mississippi. I think it's um where is it? Uh Memphis. That's where he's working last. In Memphis. So if they, if I'm right in what I've heard that they're down in Mississippi, what the hell are they down there if his work is up here? We just look all those places here. They're all going in that one place, all these places for anything to help with uh, autism. They were all going here. So, I don't know what to think, but if there's no sign of him, not apart from those women finding a, a little torch the size of your palm, and 
A, re a white sock with red stripes on. There's something else. I can't remember what they said it was. Nothing else has been found. Oh, the glasses. Right. So Seth had someone had a photo of uh, Sebastian altered so that he wouldn't have glasses on. So that if anyone sees him, at least then they know what he looks like without glasses. Because everyone's looking for Sebastian with glasses. He may not have his glasses on. You know what I mean? But if he's alive, I think his mother put him into one of these centres. You know what I mean? To one of these. And it's a note, they're all there. All round this end. So you got, where is it, New York, is it? You got New York. Yeah, you got New York, you got them there. And to be honest with you, Would New York know about this child being an Amber Alert? Is it state wide, 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 or is it just for Tennessee state? Because I've heard a lot of people saying they never received, even in Tennessee, they never received the Amber Alert on their phone. But just look for them all there. So he's got four PIs. The father's got four PIs, private investigators. Right, and that's covering a big area. Look at them all. All there. And one is Autism Tennessee. But that's social services one. Right? That's social services. So that's with the DCFS. Autism Tennessee bridges the gaps between support, resources and programs. So autistic individuals are empowered to recognise their potential. So, uh, and potential. What does it say? Hello, hello, I'm indeed very happy for the help that Dr. Inato Reigns. My son is not on the spectrum anymore. We saw a post whereby Dr. Inato cured autism. Me and my husband decided to contact him. <sighs> well, there's still my schools. And if they if they're good, they've got to be good to be a school where the staff are trained to work with children with autism and all that lot and be more understanding. So I just, when I typed that in and that come up and then I looked at the map, I went, oh, darn, that's Tennessee and Memphis and Kentucky and I think, oh, darn, that's where 
C'est parce qu'il est que mais Listen, if it's saying they haven't took him to this one, or even this one, up by, where is he? Comment il est Nothing. So, anyway, I'm going to, because I don't want to be on here too long tomorrow. And these are the inconsistencies, okay? I'm not reading it. I've got my auto reader on. So let's get back to the beginning. And we know there has been a report of abuse. We know that. Well, from what I understand, Seth Rogers, his mother, I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, was sent a video of CP taking the flyers down. Now that's impeding the search and investigation in my eyes. Right, if there are signs of abuse or neglect. Well, I think a 15-year-old autistic lad who has no problems using the toilet at his father's, but when he's at home, has problems. And when he's at school, he has problems. Tell me why that, tell me why that is. Right, oh, hold on. If the pairs do not seem concerned about finding Sebastian or actively searching for him, it could indicate they already know what happened to him. Yep, we've been saying that. You only search for someone who's missing. Right? You don't search for someone if you know where they are. And what else? Concerns about violence. Uh, 
lack of concern for lack of concern they've got no concern for sebastian they do nothing but belittle him when they do go on any youtube channels or news channels or anything like that they do nothing but belittle sebastian so they don't care hold on hold on let's continue Oh, yes, yes, we know that. Not necessary, because a good attorney will always tell you, if you have to go in and speak to the police, whether you're guilty, whether you're guilty or not, take an attorney, take a lawyer with you, a solicitor, whatever. Take someone with you. Doesn't necessarily mean they are guilty. And we will, we will get justice for Sebastian. But it's, it's like they go on about there be now. I don't agree with this, right? Yes, okay. He's gone to wherever because that's where he's working. But she could have stayed up in Tennessee, right? But she didn't. She's gone down there. Why? why 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 hasn't she stayed up here up there with and helped with the searches or just gone out with flyers and put flyers up on the pole poles and whatever else you could put a flyer up on. right but she's done nothing and i can't get my head around that she's a mother you, Christ sake, she's a mother. She gave birth to that little boy. Has she got no feelings at all for Sebastian? I just can't get my head around it. Hold on. Just need this. Need me a little just to... right. Uh I just can't get my head round here. I can't. Now hold on, I'm gonna pull it up. Uh very good. It's one by JLR. I'll put the link in the description. No. No, no, no. Where's the one he's doing today? There's one before that, I know that. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. 
Mm. 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 Jonathan Lee Riches and investigates the search for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers continues. Sebastian Rogers, 15 years old, was reported missing on the morning of February 26, 2024, by his mother, Katie Proudfoot. He has still not been found. There are many people out there searching for Sebastian. Volunteers, there are water search and rescue volunteer type groups out there going in the waters looking for him in the cumberland river all over the place there's law enforcement searches people are all over the place but guess what folks there's two people that are not searching for sebastian rogers two people and that would be katie proudfoot christopher proudfoot who are seen spotted at a campground in Horn Lake, Mississippi, Yogi Bear Campground. I'm gonna show you something right here. Check it out. There they are. So they're at a campground and apparently, according to my sources, lots of people have been going around there, kind of like asking the Proudfoots, yelling out, where's Sebastian? And wondering what the Proudfoots are doing over a hundred miles away from where Sebastian was reported missing. Now, Chris Proudfoot supposedly works at St. Jude's Hospital. He publicly announced that don't know if he's working now but katie's with him and, and people are like well how is katie's vehicle with chris hundreds of miles away when sebastian went missing in hendersonville tennessee that's where sebastian was reported missing sumner county katie's not there no one's at the prophet's home they're not out searching but there's a lot of people that are not the prophets though why i actually put out a tweet about the people going around this Yogi Bear campground where the Proudfoots are currently staying. I tweeted this out on my Twitter account at JLR Investigates. Chris and Katie Proudfoot are camping at Yogi Bear. Yep. Okay, fair enough. We know where they are, right? But I don't agree with the people going around in the cars and shouting and honking the horns and all that lot. It's not fair to the other people on that site. It's not. Right? And 
I'm just thinking now because someone on a Facebook page said she drove she drove past there again this morning because she was wishing to get some of these glasses for her child for the solar eclipse, right? And their cars were still there. Should a welfare check be done? Because the cars have not moved, right? Someone come up with a good uh, comment. Have you thought perhaps their father or uh, stepfather or his mother have come and picked them up and took them out of there? Actually, but they've just left their cars there. You know what I mean? Are they there? The cars are there. The five wheeler is there. But it doesn't mean they are there. So are... Uh, I'm just hoping the police are keeping an eye on them. You know what I mean? Privately and quietly keeping an eye on them. Because how do we know they're living in... Uh, and it said on there, Mississippi. Born Lake, Mississippi. Right? So it is Mississippi, not Memphis. So why are they going in Mississippi? I thought his work was up in Memphis. You know what I mean? Now that's Rose. This back into consideration. If they're going in Mississippi, right, around here, could a uh, could there's, and this is why she's there, could there still be in one of these places? That's the two closest there. That's the school, that's only on the day. I don't know what this is, I don't know if it's a 24 hour thing, if they stay there or what. If they're in Mississippi, it could mean is very close to there because I thought I was up in Memphis I didn't realize I was down in Mississippi so it's hard it's confusing and we need answers Seth needs answers I'd be surprised if they are still in that five wheeler. Right? I think they've moved out of that. Their parents have been dying, took them out during the night and took them somewhere else. And they've left the cars there so that people believe they are there. Because if that, if people keep driving up and shouting abuse and whatever at them, the management of that Logie Bear caravan place is not going to stand for that. Well, how long will they keep it up where they can stay there? They're going to be kicked off. And as I said, people need to leave them alone. Keep an eye, make sure you know where they are. Don't give out the details because the police could be watching them. You know what I mean? To see if they do go anywhere. Out. You know, sort of thing. Because we don't know if they're being... If they are going to see Sebastian in one of these places. Because I just think that Sunday... They did a lot. They got up, they had breakfast, they spoke on the phone to family and all this lot. They got dressed, washed and dressed, then went out, did a bit of shopping, picked the niece up and the two aunts, was with them, went to BJ's, then went bowling, and then went for lunch, for dinner. 
That's a lot to be young in a day. And especially for a child who's autistic, it's not too much stimulation, if you know what I mean. Too much for them to take in, in one go. Like, I wouldn't be able to take my grandson bowling unless I put his ear defenders on. Because the noise would be too much for him. And I think that's the problem when he goes to these, um, what, where I hate taking him. But I will take him, but I hate taking him there. It's these places that we call soft play. And it's so loud in there with all these other children running about and screaming and laughing. And... But I think if he's got his headphones on, his earpieces on, then I, the staff will see, look, this child's got earpieces on. Right? He obviously has a thing with sound. And be more aware of him. And I think children around him would be more aware of him then as well. And so would parents because I dread going to these places. And it's a shame because he loves going to these places. But I dread going there. I sit there or I'm waiting there watching him. I'm just waiting for a parent or someone to come up to me and have a dig. Oh, go up to my grandson and have a dig at him. Because then I'm stepping in. I'm going, you know what I mean? Back off from my grandson. He doesn't understand. And now um, it's too much for him. And I think they did a lot in that one day. What did they do on the Saturday? Did they not go anywhere on the Saturday? Because they seem to do everything on the Sunday. Was it her way of saying, look, we'll have this fun day today because she knew. He was going to go somewhere else afterwards. Where she wouldn't be able to spend time with him. Just putting it out there. I'm no detective. And I'm sorry, but I'm fed up at the people saying, uh, what was it? There's one, what was it? Uh, tragedy. Tragedy pink pimps. YouTube tragedy pimps. We're not. I'm not. I'm not making anything out of doing this. There are some YouTubers that do get paid. Well, not paid, but make money off it. But when you think about the work and whatever that goes into doing these lives, it's not. I will just go live. You know what I mean? Some of this information I'm showing you today. I spent an hour this morning and I found that institution and I was going through every one of those institutions, reading up on every one of them. Right? I went on X and found Taylor Swift, started following her. I do like her, but I'm not. A big fan fan, I'm not crazy on her. I can take it or leave her. Right? And I posted on some of their posts. I put comments on some of their posts. Right? <coughs> <coughs> because they haven't got an email address <coughs> that I can find. If I can find an email address for her <coughs> or for her agent then I would email them but we don't just say oh well eight o'clock right log on we don't do that it takes time and preparation to put these lives together but I'm not here for the money you know what I mean even if when the time comes there I can get monetized there I've got enough people and enough views and and you're facing I've met all their criteria. I monetize my sites. It's just so that I can um, get some revenue up it through the ads. If nothing else. I'll get revenue off the ads. 
but I'm not a tragic to bimp. I'm not hunting around for cases like this. This one, I sort of clicked to because from the first time I heard about it, which was on the Tuesday evening after he went missing on the Monday. And there's just something about this lad that didn't sit right with me. Didn't sit right with me. And at the time, no, not many YouTubers were on this case. I think the first one was the twelfth time. And that's how I was seeing it on Monday. Was it the Monday? Or the Tuesday? I think it was on the Tuesday night I was seeing it. And then on the Wednesday, I did a live. And I was showing, like, the searches that was going on. And looking at the area where he lived. And this was before I found out, apparently, that he walked out the house with no shoes on. And I was looking at routes he could have took, maybe to go to his father's. Right? And things like that. And then it came out that he had no shoes. He had no phone, he had no money, no coat, barefoot. I thought, well, that's just what all that like, I've just said out the flipping door. Because there's no way a child of 15 with the mental age of, let me say, 12, 12, 13, right? Gonna walk out the house without his phone, without shoes, without coat, and without some money to get them somewhere. They're not gonna do it. But then I thought, okay, perhaps he did just walk out the house, he was just going to meet someone. Well, but then that got thrown out the window because then I heard, oh, there was no scent from any of the dogs. I thought, flipping out. How did this child leave that house then? If he's not left any scent around the outskirts of that house, how has he walked out of that house? And as I said, I'm doing this for nothing. I don't get paid to do this. So if anyone ever came on my page, I'm here and said, call me tragic to pimp. They will get kicked straight off. Because I will tell you now, I don't get paid. I'm not monetized. I do it purely for the children. For that reason only. And then when I heard that first interview by Seth, and he said, my son don't belong to no one. But well, God damn it, he's my son, and I want him back. My heart just broke, literally. And then when I heard this father being out there every day searching for his son, and that the mother and stepfather hanging in and stepped out the flipping door, I thought, what's going on? What the hell is going on? Now, I picked up on that within, what, a week? Because within a week, by the end of the first week, they did that interview. And I'm thinking, and then Seth done the interview about four or five days later at the vigil on the Friday. But by then, the mother and stepfather had gone on a live Done an interview with a news network station. Right? And being on another live. Before Steph even said anything. And I think Steph held back for so long. He's just so mentally and physically tired now. He just wants his son home. Right? Yeah, we've seen that one, so we're going to listen to this one. The facts. These are the 
facts. If there's anything missing as you hear this, put it in the comments. I can add it to it. Okay? All right, let's get this going. So it's going through all these. It goes through all that. Right, now I'm trying to find where it was, the video where the stepfather said he phoned the police, law enforcement, at 6.20. Right, and we'll leave it on the police call. It is, the call came through at 6.39am. That's like an extra 20 minutes difference. I can only say maybe five minutes. He said 6.20 and the phone call come through at 6.25. I don't, I could believe that. But when you're saying, uh, somewhere around about 6.20, I'd have to have their records to be sure. Right? Well, 6.20, 6.39, that's 19 minutes difference. That's a long time. I, I, I know why. Well, I've got a suspicion as to why. There was an incident involving the belt in January. And I believe child services told um, Chris CP that he's got to move out the family home while the search well let me go out the bus loop again while the um investigation went on and that's why he was not in the family home during February because he was told by law enforcement 
we've got to move out of the family home. And I think Katie didn't like that idea. So something either happened at home or they took him to an institution where no one knows but them. Right? But that's what I believe as to why he wasn't in the family home. Because people say, but wouldn't you come home on the weekends and spend Friday, Saturday and even Sunday evening at home and then maybe leave about 9 o'clock Sunday night to get down there for about 19, 10, 10, 10, 10, about 12 p.m. and go back down there then ready for work Monday morning. Right? No one could understand that and then it clicked to me. Then it all came out about about incident. I thought, no, nope. that's why I wasn't there. Go leave. No, 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 no. The K Kentucky landfill is where the construction site will take all those big skips with their rubbish in to the Kent Kent Kentucky uh, landfill. The residential uh, garbage was took to another landfill. Now, we don't know if that's been searched or not. I should hope it has. I really do hope it has. Because the Kentucky one was full of construction site rubbish. The everyday waste and rubbish garbage was took to another landfill. I'm going to find that out so we can, I can tell you where it is. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep, and that's been included for seven more weeks. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay.
Cái lúc đó tôi bờ tôi bờ Ừ vậy như ngay bọn nó sẽ cho bài ta Chỉ như ngay bọn CP sẽ cho bài ta It said Why don't say they had flies on the table for Sebastian Not saying they didn't But she was on the phone talking to Right UCA United Cajun Navy Because they were the ones who called them in Lie It was Seth that got in touch with them. It was Seth that put the call out for them. Not them. Oh, sorry. Right, because it's just a photo there of the page, the mysterious. This is where I got it from off that page. The mysterious disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. And there's some people on there putting some good information up like this. Right? So, again, there was lies in there because they didn't get in touch with. United Cajun Navy, Seth did. Right? What else was there? Uh, he not only threatened to take call an attorney on, on his sister about the GoFundMe, there's also something else he threatened him with. As well, with an attorney with, I can't remember what it was now. Right? But them are the facts, as they are. I'm sorry about the asterisk, but the audio reader reads as it is on the paper. Okay? Sorry about that. So them are the facts. And we've read through the inconsistencies and they wonder why people are calling them out. Now, JLR said after that one video he done the other day where he was walking along that main road where the searchers had been going into, right? When the police had that big two day search thing go on. And when he got back to his car, a neighbour of <coughs> KT and Chris Proudfoot come up to them. He was talking to them. No hostility. They even got another, another neighbour on the phone. So there's like a three-way conversation going on. And none of them believe their story. They don't believe him. They don't believe that Sebastian just walked out that house. Right? And that's because someone would have caught him on a camera somewhere. Right? They would have seen him. There's too many cameras, too many ring doorbells. Right? So someone will get caught something, be it a shadow or something, but they are seeing something moving, right? And that's why I don't believe 
that is BS what they're saying is walked out. And I can't believe, I hope to God the police, the law enforcement are not going by their word, by Katie and Chris Proudfoot's word. I hope they're not. I hope they've got some more information. But apparently he's supposed to be doing, I know Seth is doing a lot to kept him with Nancy Grace on Wednesday. But Chris is supposed to be doing one with law enforcement as well. But to be honest with you, one that no, he can come out of that and say, Yeah, I passed. I took the I took it. I passed. Because law enforcement won't tell us whether they passed or not. They don't need to tell us. Right? It's for their investigation. And as I said, the only reason, the only way we'll, we will know if he failed that lie detector is if either on the same day or a day or so later, they put some nice shiny bracelets on him. You know what I mean? I'd rather him take one with Nancy Grace because she takes it with a polygraph person who is works with the police and all that lot right it's not some hot shot person who just does this is qualified he works with the police and everything else she's paid she's paying for it herself right but uh, what we got here you telling me the police have been called out on these Hold on. Oh, I've just got to see what this is. Oh, uh, this was two months ago. I got me to Steve Sebastian. Hi. And. What was I saying? So, at least then, if, she, if he took it with her, the polygrapher would say whether they passed or whether they'd been deceived, deceived, uh, deceived, whatever, whether they was telling the truth or not, right? And so I'm glad Seth is doing one with Nancy Grace because he's got no worries. They've got him on camera from when he clocked in to when he clocked out, right? He's a deputy sheriff at the corrections, at a correction place, right? That is where they take, take them before they have to get to prison. <laughs> but he's a deputy sheriff there. So they've got him on camera. They've got him clocking in, they've got him clocking out. They've got witnesses of him being there. Everything. But Chris, have they got witnesses of him being on that site on the Sunday night? Don't know. Have they got camera footage of him being around that five wheeler on the Sunday night? All Sunday night? Did his car leave there any time? Did he use another person's car? I don't think. I think he's involved, right? But I, I seriously don't think he's the one who took Sebastian to wherever he is. If he's in an uh, institution, I think uh, Kate. Um, not Katie. I think his father, stepfather and mother may have took Sebastian there. You know what I mean? It's too many inconsistencies. I don't know. But it's something they're, they're checking into anyway. He has got his PIs onto that. So he is checking into all that. Anyway. I understand over in the USA they had a solar eclipse today. But we're not going to watch that. 
because I've got some else that I need you to look at. All right, let's get with that. There's some else that I need you to look at. Well, watch. I want you to listen to the police audio again. It's always good to re-listen to these things. So that sometimes we pick up on things that we didn't hear the first time. And sometimes it's handy because I'm not joking. The amount of people I've seen come up on Facebook pages that have they done a check on their phones? Duh. Yes. You know what I mean? They've done all that. Have they done a forensic check on their phones? I don't know. That means going back into everything they've deleted all right so we're going to listen to this and then that will be me for the end of the right so it's a lot clearer where this one is than the than the one by it's the same dispatch call but it's just been cleared up a bit Okay, so we just got to watch this and then we'll listen to this and then I will call it a note. all the doors were locked so how did he get out then you're telling me he unlocked the door walked out locked the door again right and didn't leave no scent for any dog to pick up on okay all right this morning they woke up and their 15 year old girl was not in the bed we are white male three blonde hair across my face but one thing that's going down I was going to be wearing a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants. Two male does have a form of autism. This is the first time it happened. I was going to be in the home before midnight. All the doors are locked at this time. Did four in a row. Hello, Marcia. Hello, Central. 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 Hello,
Okay. Maybe it's Chad. Can you call all of the local hospitals just to make sure he's on one of those? That's right. Sixty eight central on pain. I say there's no medical center ER, center station ER, center regional ER, and Thailand, all clear of the juvenile. Uh, so I do have a 911 hang up in Sydney at 132 Hollywood Boulevard, zone one. There is no call history and I have attempted language line with no connection. Do you want me to clear it? Center Center, you clear. 68 Central, K9 on the ground. Copy, K9 on the ground. Hey, Jenkins, he's on for 63 Central. 63 Kevin? I'll be 10 6 at Kevin. Well, uh, we're going on north on the staff. 47. Code Red has the launch. There is the Code Red has the launch. There is the. One open animal farm near uh, Puppy Hollow, Central Point area. Go ahead. Next big track back up, going into the construction site over here, back toward the beach. Before I'm behind you. It's awful muddy. Do you see any footprints, anything? You shouldn't have any shoes on. Hey, yeah, this is all dry. A hard pack. Out of cyber court. LT, we're now headed back south towards the cemetery on the far end of the construction site. Simple, I can see you. I do have some footprints over here. Right there where you're standing? Yeah. Leading right over here to the retaining pond. No shoes, just footprints. A shoe that Max went straight into the pond. He literally dove into it. 12 DMA one you direct. Repeat the right. Let me make sure. Max led me straight to the retaining pond. Oh, we're behind Willow Boulevard. He dove right into the, into the water. Yeah, do you see any footprints around it? There's a few uh, footprints in some of the softer dirt uh, headed straight this way on the track that he was running. 12 47, what size shoes is he wear? Size 10, 25 central. All right, two staff reports. Go ahead. Do we have a picture yet? That's a cool. Can you send it to me, please? Me too, send job out. Stafford, court call. Okay. Where the rear ramp is, uh, where the trees are, 25 feet, maybe out in toward the middle. Two D may one. Two D may one. Hi, hey guys. The construction's on. Oh, there's another pond. There's somebody standing in the woods. It's a, it looks like a person. It is a person we know, but there's another pond. He's standing back there by himself. Past the construction zone in the same area back there. Is that to the north of us? Yeah, the, the north end of it, yeah. Where they're working on the machinery at goes straight back. There's another pond back there, but there's a person in the woods uh, by that pond. Past the house on the other side of the tree line. Going back toward the beach. Or we're going on the back side. Yeah, on the back side, and he's not help in the woods. It's Hendersonville 517. I'm on the northeast corner in the cemetery across the tree line. Am I close? No, the back side. Sneaky if you can. And drop of what three words location. Stand by. Uh, let me see if I can find them on my map. I got my drone ground for the moment, and I'll see if I can do it. I'm very good over. One of the two. I'm in my truck going up the corner. Can you see us? I am told us. I'm going to jump in with you. Two, there's four of us on foot coming across the yard. Start directions. 19 on the same. Everybody's on the ATV right there in that field. Drive straight to the woods. Four. Straight in, straight in. Keep going like you're going. Keep going. Go to the left. Go to the left. He's come back, he passed it. Look at his floss on foot on those side, pick us up and tell us which way to go. Yeah, we only have one drone, we don't want to get off the target, and we got somebody close to it. All right, somebody's walking straight to it right there. So walk, walk, there's two people right there. Walk, walk like you're going, walk like you're going, straight. 
In the woods, in the woods. You should be about 15 foot from it. What's the child's first name? She'll be all over it, whatever it is right there. The two people walking the woods. It's a mannequin. Sorry, guys. Look just like a person from the air. Here's the most tasty place. What's the Here's the most tasty place. What's the name of the child that we're looking for? First name is Sebastian. I'm oh, sorry, can you repeat that? First name is Sebastian. We have a last known uh, physical being description with black sweatpants with a white stripe, black long sleeve t shirt with a print. Just one second. Service. Mickey, how many drones do you all have up? One at the moment. I've got my ground showing you start up, so uh, I'll be back in the air momentarily. 10 4. Central one thing. Put two out here, will you? Rice calling, please. Timbo. Who's at the residence? I just got back here. 10 4. Has anybody been there since the nation? There's a whole bunch of people here now. My mom has 1255. 1255. Yes, sir. Can you have me listen to the radio on the north end until we wrap this up, please? Yes, sir. Brandon, you've got uh, Andersonville. Mountain Patrol coming up there, and Joe's sending some more cars. If I want, if we can start from the beginning, from the original house, and set up a new plan up there. Yeah, boy, that's what we're doing now, sir. Thank you. 63 Central Clear, false call. Oh, you as a neighbor advised that he's found the child under his child, under his son's car, which is across the street, two doors up. So be sure and search under cars and under things. Go ahead. Who do you want to go with this other? K-9 search and rescue. Civil. There's the can. HFG down here at the end of the road. I'm going to direct him to the pond. Good, well. Wow. Go ahead. I just talked to the GC, the construction back here. He's going to start getting the word out to all his crews that are out here working. Yeah, well, thank you. He's going to have them check all their current under construction sites that they're working on. And they report back. Yeah, well. Is. Associated with 1008 Stafford Fort, supposed to be coming back to 1008 Stafford Fort so we can get a game plan and reconvene. Hey, Target, can you put a drone right over top of this trash can, this dumpster, if there's anything in it? 12, all the buildings up here are clear. Hey, we'll come back to 1008. We're going to play two long groups. Hey, we'll. 16th Central. In service with B12. 12 Central. 16 will be Patrol Supervisor. I'll be seeing Commander at 1008. Come on. So that was that. Uh, so it was a false alert. Uh, so I don't want the dog is smelling. <laughs> I really don't. And what about the footprints that they just seen some light footprints but it looked like I was running. So as I said, it's, it is a very complex case. And you gotta go by what the police are telling us. Which I've just read out all the facts. And I've just read out all the inconsistencies. Now I have got this other piece of work. But as I said, I won't do that today because I'll show you it. But it's so long. When it opens up. No, that's not the one. So we could get rid of that. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Still got a stinking cold. Uh, which song is it, Dave? 
Ahí voy, sí. Está bien. Right, I'll show you it, but I'm not going to go through it because it is so long. I think there's like four or five pages. Right. And she sort of like tries to break everything down of what's been said and what's been seen. Right, there's one. This is the second page. Third page. Fourth page, fifth page. So it's quite long. So, like I said, I'm not going to go through that today because it is a long one. That can be for another month. So, what we've we talked about tonight so far, we talked, I've looked at institutions. Right? Or autism. And there are quite a few, as you can see. Right? Now, I thought there was up in Memphis, which is here. But I'm not the guy in Mississippi, which is down here. Could be here. Because apparently he works in Memphis. So perhaps he's carried on park. I think they said it's about a 20 odd minute drive from where the caravan park is to his work. So, it just look what's there. Yeah. And the Mississippi Centre for Autism. So why would Kate go with him down there? Right? Now, I don't agree with anyone go driving around and shouting abuse at them. I don't. Because as Seth the father says, he has to believe this because that's his job. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Right? So. I don't think it's right that people are driving around and shouting abuse at them and everything. It's not fair. It's not it's not right. Not that's not fair, it's not right. And I think if she come home, I think people have got to stop driving past her house. They've got to. They need to leave the house alone. Because for all we know, the police could I hope the police have got someone on them. Tracking them. Because like someone said, she's drove past there again today. Because she lives around that way. She drove past it again today and the cars are still in the same place. The cars have not moved. Now, they've been like that since, what, Friday night? So I couldn't understand maybe Saturday and Sunday they didn't go out, they just stayed in the caravan, the five-wheeler, you know what I mean? But Monday, he seemed not have at work. So if that was the case, his car shouldn't be there if he's at work. So, did they go down there just to get away, take all the aggro away from the house? So the neighbours wasn't being disturbed by it. Because I think it's wrong what people are doing when they're going around and shouting abuse at them. It's not fair on the neighbours and it's not fair on the other people in the caravan park. Right? As we said, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. So people need to back off. And let the police leave it with the police because it's people like that that are get, giving us YouTubers a bad name. And it isn't YouTubers doing it, 
it's not YouTube is going around shouting abuse at them. So, but I need to just back off, stop shouting the abuse, right? We've got someone down there keeping a track of us. That person will tell us if they move. If that five wheeler moves, she'll tell us. Right? But I just hope the police are keeping a track of them. Because like she said, those cars have not moved. Right? Now, are they in that five wheeler? Or has the father or the mother, stepfather or the mother, uh, Chris's stepfather and mother, come down and picked them up in the car and took them away during the night? And they just let left their cars there so that people think well the cars are there they've got to be there and they've gone somewhere else and that isn't good if they go into hiding and the police don't know where they are then that isn't good right but at least if they're on that caravan path Okay, they want to go about their normal business, let them go about their normal business. They've already proved to me how guilty they look. I'm not saying guilty they are, I'm saying guilty they look. Just by their actions and lack of actions. So, so I've got my cat standing on me. So, I think they need to just stop with the harassment because that, they only, they'll only end up in prison on harassment charges. And then today we're talking about another YouTuber, right? And um, one of the women said she didn't like this YouTuber because apparently she, she claimed she found so many bodies. I'm sorry, but as a YouTuber, we don't find bodies. We don't. We don't find anything. Unless we're out there, boots on ground, and you actually find something. But if you're just at home, like me, I can't get out there and do anything because I'm in the UK. So we don't find bodies. We just act on the information we find, we are given, right, and put the word out. We're not finding people, we're just putting the word out. So please, if anyone even thinks of coming on this site, on my page, I'm alive, and call me a tragedy peep, they will get blocked, they will be deleted. Because I do not get paid for this. I am not monetized. I do this out of my own goodwill and for the children. That's what I do it for. I've always said I do it for these children. And that is it. You don't get it from no one else. I do it for the children. Because every child needs to be found and brought home. Every child. And as I said, TBI, I just find if they have a complex case, like Summer Moon Utah Wang and like Sebastian Rogers, they don't know how to deal with it. Right? They just don't. You know, Steph Rogers is wanting uh, TBI to take over. They don't know what they're doing. Unless, like I said, TBI can go on to federal land. Right? They've got a lot more power than the police and law enforcement. And I think either TBI or FBI should be taking this over because it's going the same way as some of that one. And I 
thì khi lập trang dịch tiêu chẳng bị về chỗ phân tích chiều trên cây bình bị xỉn ngọt bị phản you know I mean there's never young girl that was missing is still missing and she's got an age dependency of a lot lower than what her age is so she's on um, classed as the on the danger list because I think she's didn't she say that she was 17 18 but she's got a mind of a teenager a young teenager and then find her so I don't know what TBI I'm doing but they're not finding the children that's just my opinion right and then I go through Facebook pages and they go oh, we've got the constitutional rights well that don't apply to me because I'm in the UK but I understand where they make it where these people are coming from you've got constitutional rights like here in the UK right unless you live out in the country you cannot go to the local shop without being followed on a camera if you live out in the country then there's less cameras right but even in, when you drive around hendersonville i just thought there was cameras on all them traffic lights but there isn't but in the uk every flipping traffic light you've got lights really you really have got lights you cannot walk anywhere without being on camera but there is places in the uk we don't have all the cameras and as i said that's more out in the country way if you live out in the countryside way then the cameras are going to be far far less right so if you live in the pardon me if you live in the towns and the cities then you can't go nowhere you really can't because there's one just coming out of my flat there's one two three three cameras catch me and that's just coming out of my flat there's one in the lift one in the entrance way and one outside uh -huh. and then if i walk the other way the error block opposite me their camera will catch me their outside camera will catch me and then you've got like all these other buildings with ring doorbells and businesses with their cameras so we are caught all the way but like i said if we are out in the country then it's there is less but i'm quite surprised where they are there isn't like uh, cameras on the light jlr has noticed it he's done three drive rounds three different routes from that texas road case from there back to katie's house he's done three different routes and he's been saying on these routes i don't think there was any, any cameras on those on there no i am surprised by that anyway it is what two hours now big big topic here i'd just like to say to those sitting in the bushes thank you for being here i've still got me cold as you can hear in my voice i've still got that cold i'm trying my hardest to get me to be but since i had that uh operation and i'll be able to treat me. my immune therapy my immune system is a lot lower so it takes me longer to get over a simple cold 
really does. Anyway, so thank you anyway for being here with me. Um, we will go through that again, but in more detail, especially the institutions and things like that. You can have a closer look at them. Uh, we will go through that one piece of work I just showed you. But um, as I said, that's a long piece of work. But perhaps I can do that next time, as well as go through, look at some of the institutions. Unless something else comes up, I doubt it. So we'll be doing that next time. So tomorrow night we'll be looking at the institutions. Yeah, these. Right, and what they offer and all this lot. And then we'll also look at is it this document there? Um, we'll also look at this. Okay. I will not be reading this. I will be using my auto reader. Okay, so it's interesting what this woman has wrote down here. Very interesting. So anyway, I'm going to say good night before I go. Please. No, I say good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you for being here with me. Good night.